gave my bride, let's go for a ride in my new fangled automobile. Just where we will go, nobody knows, but it's sure a great way to feel. Behind the wheel of a speed me to steal, it's my new fangled automobile. Hello and welcome to Vintage Car History. I'm Wild Bill. All right, here's a mouthful. Marquis Jules Félix Philippe Albert de Dion de Vendôme. I mean, does it get any more French than that? And this dude was larger than life. I mean, he raced cars, he played tennis, he fondled women, but he had weekends off and he was his own boss. I mean, yeah, this guy actually lived like that. Heir to a boat ton of money and a whole lot of attitude, he decided to spend his time and money gambling, dueling people he didn't like, and playing with big toys. And those toys needed to go fast. But he had a problem. It didn't matter how much money you had. In 1881, there was no one in the world that manufactured a car. Benz and Daimler would still not build their first for another four years. Didion was no engineer and had no clue how to make what he wanted. He just wanted it. The story goes that on one fine day he walked past a storefront where, in the window, a toy mechanical train was tugging along its tracks. And he thought to himself, Self? Whoever made that train could make what I want. So he found out that some dude named George Bouton, a local toy maker, was responsible. Bouton and his brother-in-law helped him, a guy named Charles Trepido. And for some unknown reason, and how much of any alcohol or opium was involved is also unknown, De Dion decided to hire these two guys to design and build cars for him. As Jay Leno would say, Albert De Dion was a member of the More Money Than Brains Club. As it turned out, these two toy makers were also very into steam engines and would have loved to try to make a steam car if they had the money when all of a sudden money walked past their window. Within two years, the new company, Didion Bouton, was born and producing steam automobiles. Indeed, even offering them for sale. And some people did buy them. Indeed, the oldest automobile in the world that is still legal to drive on a road is one of these first Didion Boutons, a personal steam carriage dating from 1884, and I believe is the very car that set the very first world land speed record at a mind-numbing 37 miles-ish an hour. And this is still almost two years before Benz and Daimler would build their first experimental gas-powered cars. As much as his family derided him for being reckless and childish, Comte de Dion was indeed quite visionary and a driving force, pun intended, in the development of the automobile industry. Prior to 1890, de Dion Bouton pushed his two toy makers to make his steam cars better, faster, stronger than the competition, which were the gas-powered cars. And during this period, they accomplished quite a bit. The company built a variety of steam vehicles, from small carriages to trucks and buses. In fact, the famous Didion axle, or dead axle as it is known, was invented by Trepador during this time. This is where the wheels are connected to the differential by an axle with four universal joints. Think of one of those rock crawler 4x4s and how their axles are jointed. That's what he invented, and many rednecks owe him a moment of thanks. But the good Marquis wasn't satisfied with steam power for long. He saw that in the long run, gas-powered engines would win the war between gas, steam, and electric that was just getting underway, and he began to require his company to go in that direction. Now, Charlie Trepido didn't like that one bit, and he resigned over that issue in 1894, or at least that's the reason he gave. George Bouton had been working on a gas engine, and the thing was a good one. Didion thought to himself, self? If Daimler can make an engine and sell it, why can't I? So the die was cast, and the company began to convert from steam to gas car production, along with offering their engines to various upstarts. And they built tens of thousands of engines. Bouton finally perfected his engine, and it was released for sale in 1895. Single cylinder, the thing could rev up to 35 RPM, 3500 RPM, which was unheard of in the day. They had so many companies that wanted to buy their engines that when they were manufacturing them, if a completed engine failed its bench test before shipping, they threw it into a pile to be dismantled by some other crew for spare parts, because it took less time to do that than to try to figure out what the problem was. 
At the same time, Didier Bouton was designing and building their own cars, and they sold very well. I mean, very well. By the year 1900, Didier Bouton supplanted Benz as the largest manufacturer of automobiles in the world. They did not hold the title long, but they got there, and the fact that they got there is a tribute to the vision of a crazy nobleman and the skills of a couple of toy makers. Thanks for watching Vintage Car History. We'll see you next week. Peace.